as I can. Um, let me check all the chat. So um, we have lots of people here in um, uh, on YouTube. So um, uh, okay. Um, Omar, Omar just hopped in and just said he was starting shortly. Uh, I started now. Guys, uh, do you hear me very well? Uh, let me know if you can hear me. Um, uh, are you guys hearing me on uh, on YouTube, on uh, uh, on Facebook, on LinkedIn? I see some messages. So I have here my... Uh, um, I have here the screen when I see all the people messaging. So if you see me looking in that direction, that means that I'm looking at the people who are chatting. Um, it's not working on YouTube. Uh, I am YouTube is not working. Uh, it's not shared on YouTube. Do you, is there any uh, issue with YouTube? Uh, you guys can hear me on, uh, on here, on, on YouTube. And uh, can you guys hear me on Facebook and LinkedIn? Do you guys hear me? Loud and clear. Perfect. Um, here we are. So today we will start our sessions and um, excuse me if there is some uh, technical issues. I
Hello, hello. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Hello again. Sorry for all interruption. I think there was a problem with the sound. So if the sound is in, let me know, guys. Uh, now it's okay when the life will start. Okay, everything sounds okay. Do you guys hear me here? So people now hear me on LinkedIn. Uh, guys on Facebook, uh, Ganesh, do you hear me? Um, uh, yeah, I can hear myself as well. So, um, very good. So, we'll start and today I will announce the winners of the giveaway. Sorry guys about the last 10 minutes of I was ranting and nobody hear me. But anyway, so we will start again and today we will be uh, announcing the winners of the giveaway at the end of the session but today i want something that's more important i want to tell you after the three life uh, training that we covered uh, in the last weekend what are the next steps for your career what are the resources the advices you should follow everything you should do from now until um, um uh, in the in your career in the future um so we will I have a prepared presentation for you where I'll give you all the resources for red team and blue team for penetration testing, for answer response, for malware analysis, for digital forensics, what exactly you should learn in each one of them. And after that, we will announce the winners. Uh, we'll also cover uh, my training for in 10 minutes just to let you know, guys, what's what's exactly this training is about. And then we'll announce the three winners that win that training. Then we will announce the uh, the next prize, which is the the um, the malware analysis and incident response bundle. And then the winners of this, uh, the seven winners of this prize. And then a prize for every one of you guys today. You will all get a prize and I will announce it way at the end. Uh, so make sure that you stay until the end. Even after I announce the winners, stay until the end because there is a prize for you. Is that everyone is okay? I'm looking, when I look here, I'm looking at the, at the chat. So, uh, because I have all the chat here. So let me, um, go through the chat. Um, anybody has any question? Um, Uh, everything is okay now, sounds okay, we can hear you. Um, okay, good. So, um, so um, Hassan Basun is asking about the roadmap for SOC Tier 1. I will answer it, maybe not the, the expected answer, but I will answer it. Um, hope the reorder so we can uh, so you can see from the beginning. Yes, I will start from the beginning. Uh, how long is this session, Amr? I think it's around one hour, starting from now, uh, because we already had 50 minutes of uh, of loss. Uh, great consoling. Thank you. From Egypt with love. Thank you very much. Uh, what's the duration of the meeting? Is around um, around one hour um, from now. So. Let's get started. I will move to the uh, to the sessions, to the slides, um, and let's get started. So, so the next steps in your cybersecurity career, and we'll announce as well the giveaway winners. So today, um, is this life will be saved? Yes. Um, this life will be saved and you will receive the link to it again tomorrow. And anyway, make sure that you bookmark it and as well, uh, yeah, listen until the end because there is a prize for everyone. So, um, if you don't know me, my name is Amr Thabit. I'm a former Mara Research and Semantic and currently I'm working in Tenable. I am also the author of Mastering Malware Analysis book and I have been speaking in DEF CON, VB Conference, AFCON and other conferences. Um, so, um, last weekend, 
Friday, Saturday and Sunday we had a free live training and so many so many of you guys have upgraded to sit uh, for a lifetime and this training we covered one day for Red Team, one day for Instant Response uh, and Log Analysis in Blue Team and one day for Malware Analysis and Advanced Attacks. And the first day, what we have learned through this day is we learned how real targeted attacks look like, how the real attacks look like. Not we have learned through traditional bin testing courses, but what's actually happening in real life. How the attackers actually, from the time they plan their attack until they take over the whole organization, step by step, what exactly they do. And the surprising is, it's completely different from what you learn in so many different meditation testing courses. The techniques you learn about using Nmap and using Kali Linux and so on, they are useful, but that's not what we see in real life. And uh, when you work as a penetration tester, you help companies protect themselves against the real attacks. If you don't know how the real attacks look like, you will either misguide the company or tell them that they are protected, but they are not or you will not even get the job because the the interviewer or the people who will see you, they will see you like anyone else who doesn't know much about penetration testing. The truth is, there is so many people learning penetration testing. 70% of people who enter cybersecurity have get through their phase of learning penetration testing. I have been started with penetration testing and so many people start with penetration testing. Despite that, there's only one out of 10 people working in penetration testing while the others work in, in, in blue team. So there is not so many chances for you to miss. Working penetration testing, you need to make yourself unique to be able to get the job if you want to continue in that field. And the best way to make you unique is to learn the real attacks, the attacks that companies are losing millions of dollars to uh, because of. This is the attacks that you need to learn and you need to help the companies protect themselves against them. So um, we covered as well um, uh, last week and in the training, we covered uh, practical, uh, practically how to create your own malicious document, how to craft your spear phishing attack and how to create um, how to simulate a real command control server from the attacker using Caldera and simulate all the post exploitation attacks from maintaining resistance, from um, from uh, privilege escalation, from lateral movements, and we're able to simulate so many different techniques from the meter attack. Um, library of techniques. Meter attack is basically a map of all the different techniques the attacker uh, can use, um, from uh, initial access to uh, to privilege escalation, to to maintaining resistance, to lateral movement, to uh, exfiltration, stealing information. All of the techniques the attacker might ever use, over 160 techniques. All of them are in the meter attack and we saw how we can simulate these attacks one by one. So we can make sure that the organization is protected against the real techniques that's being used in the wild. Um, so we covered that in the previous uh, training. And now what is the next steps you should take? As, a, as somebody who's learning penetration testing or in the red team uh, world, what is the next steps you should take for your career? Um, and just look at the questions really fast. Uh, so, the next steps. First was actually the previous steps. Um, um, the, the prerequisites that you should have to learn any of the cybersecurity fields. And this is the prerequisites for the training kickstart your cybersecurity career, is the prerequisites for entering mutation testing, for incident response, for malware analysis, for every one of them. It's you have um, a level of IT administration, you know how to deal with Windows, with Linux, you know how to use them, not as a user, but as a kind of an, an admin, you can uh, you can manage surfaces, you can change IP, you can change default, uh, gateway, you know how, not the settings, but the concepts behind how this operating system work. And um, 
what exactly they do, what's the registry, what's process, what's thread, um, all of this information. And this information is very really similar as well to Linux. What's a schedule task and surface and, uh, and different accounts or what's, um, uh, what's, you, what's the difference between authentication author, or authorization? Um, these parts are really important. I believe something like, um, um, something like security plus or a plus is, is a good start. Um, I don't always recommend certificates. I recommend to learn the material and the material is everywhere from books, from courses, from people who made courses following the same, uh, agenda of the a plus or security plus. And we'll see that along the way. Uh, this is the basic stuff. CH is very theoretical, uh, for people who study CH. Uh, it can be a really good start if you don't have the prerequisites, but it's not the thing that will make you a pen tester. So don't go so much for CH specifically. Um, uh, this is the first thing that the IT administration. The second is the understanding of, of network protocols. How, um, how different protocols work from, uh, uh, from TCB, UDB, uh, HTTP, um, a DNS, how the requests look like, how the responses look like, what is the structure of this packet, uh, byte by byte, like, uh, this packet, like the, the, here is the first two bytes is the, the, the port, then the second two bytes is the destination port, and then four bytes the IP, then four bytes the next IP, then this, uh, SYN, and this flags, and SYN, and AC, and SYN AC, and all of this stuff related to TCB handshake, uh, HTTP, and how the HTTP request looks like, and what are the different uh, headers and stuff like that. These things are very, very important because this is the basics for you to move in British and testing, in instant response, in anything. Um, so, um, I'm just looking between both. Um, so, this is the first thing. The second is that you have to learn the traditional penetration testing first. It's not like something we completely ignore. You need to know how to use Inma, what's Inma, what's Kali, what's how diff, uh, how the penetration testing actually works and what's the main goal. Um, OSCP material is good. Uh, maybe not fully dive in, but it is good. Um, you don't also have to have the certificate. It's just there. Um, I see lots of people, uh, l l really I hear a lot from managers that they, they look at people who have OSCP and they see that they don't know anything when they, when they go to the interview. They get them, they get their resume, they, they take an interview with them and then when they interview them, they don't have any of the necessary skills. Uh, they don't have even any theoretical or, or practical knowledge. And because of that, OSCP is not always, um, preferred in, in, in interviews. It's not, I'm talking about all certificates. I'm not against OSCP specifically. OSCP is one of the best in meditation testing when it comes to certificates, but don't make your, your target is the certificate. Make your target is the practical knowledge and the way you can prove it. After you learn the traditional bin testing, you need to learn how real attacks look like. This is what will make you like from the 5% of all the mutation testers. All of them, they learn OSCB, they learn CH, and they apply for jobs. But for you, you will take the next steps, which is how real attacks look like. Learn them from the EBT groups, how they craft their attack, how they do it step by step, how to simulate these attacks from the meter attack, and as well, learning how... Um, um, so it's a question uh, about uh, what about the C, B, E, and T. I don't know. But for me, I always believe that certificates is not the thing you can go for. Um, it is, it opens doors, but it's not the main goal. Uh, some people, they have the fund to, to afford going for exam once and twice until they get the certificate. And each exam is like $400 to $600 uh, and so on. So if you if you don't, uh, if you, uh, if you cannot afford it, or even if it's not, if you feel you have more, you have more uses for that money, then don't waste it on certificate. Make sure that you have the practical knowledge and that's the most important. Make sure to invest it on your learning than investing it on papers. Some certificates might be important for the future, like CISP, for example, because of compliance and different things. But, if you are in this career, you don't need the certificate. You have many ways to prove yourself. Anyway, 
you need to learn how real attacks look like and how you can simulate them with your attack techniques. Um, also, um, uh, optional or a big plus is to learn partial and how to use partial, as well as you will need bash. Uh, you need to learn how to use bash in a good way, not not just basic grip, but you know how to craft your commands in bash. That will help you in, in beverage escalation and lateral movements a lot. Um, so, uh, there's uh, uh, Rami is saying, try to be qualified and not only certified. That's exactly it. Be qualified first, then certified. So, um, that's for the, for the, for your goals, my advice always don't go for certificates, focus on the practical knowledge. Be wary of this, of the CTFs. CTFs are good to practice what you have learned, but CTFs in many cases are not similar to what you see in real life. And I'm talking about CTFs here, penetration testing, insulin response, manual analysis, reverse engineering, whatever the thing is. I have worked for so long time in cybersecurity, maybe eight years, and I never seen one stenography crypto challenge that I have to solve in my in my day-to-day -day work. I never saw the same malware that I see here in the in the CTFs like in real life. The same happens also in meditation testing in many cases. Sometimes might be useful in the web bug hunting, but apart from this, I don't see it that useful. So make sure that you you are uh, that you are you understand this point. CTFs are useful for practicing, but they are not the real world. It's good to make you practice using the tools and get you to use the commands, but don't stop here. Continue after and see what real attacks look like and try to simulate them or try to prevent against them. Uh, as well, don't focus on bug, bu bug bounty. It's good to have CVs attached to your name and a uh, hacker one profile that looks good. But beyond that, it's not a freelancing job that you can live with. Maybe in some countries uh, it is, but in most of countries it's not, and it's not stable. Um, also, the, the wave is against bug bounty, not with it. Companies see that they are wasting money by paying bug bounties rather than developing their own team or, or improving their own uh, or providing trainings for the developers to not have the mistakes in the first place. So they see that it's a, it's a money goes outside of the company to fund some others rather than focus on themselves. So the wave is against bug bounty and you should be aware of that too. What you should do, other than having certificates, is to create your own blog or your own tools to show your practical work. Have your own blog that shows, okay, today I decided to simulate ABT35. Here's how I did the simulation. Here's how I created the labs. Let's say two machines and one domain controller. You can do that in Azure for, uh, for free uh, at the beginning. If you have a good laptop, you can try that as well. You can even do a simulation bit by bit on, on a one VM and try to go through the whole process and show how this works step by step, what you exactly did. The next time talk about one attack, uh, one bridge escalation, how that works, what's exactly it, even if it's a known one, just talk about it in your blog from your understanding, how you tested it, how it works, how to prevent against them and keep your blog alive uh, every week, at least one post, if not two, and keep learning and keep writing on your own blog. Keep um, showing that you are learning through the time. You are simulating real attacks. You know how real attacks work. You look at EBT, different EBT groups. You see how the, the, um, how the real attacks look like. So when you are getting to, when you apply for a job, the, the manager will see that you have been learning petition testing a lot. You have been practicing by your own self and you know what you're talking about. And remember at the end that your worth in any company is equal to the level of attacks you can prevent. If you are working in, in the, in the mutation testing, you simulate these attacks to help companies protect against them and, uh, and uh, test their defenses against these attacks. If you are working in the blue team, you are actively protecting against these attacks. Your worth is equal to the level of attacks you can prevent. So make sure that you are learning how the 
top attacks that cost company millions of dollars, how they work, how I can simulate them, and how I can protect companies against them. Um, so all of this is the advices. We didn't go into the resources yet. Uh, just one second. Um, so, um, uh, so the question, will you, will you talk about blue team as well? Yes, of course I will. Just, just after I finish with the, with the red team, um, how to practice meter attack. Um, we will get into that with the resources, but uh, basically you need to, um, you need to simulate, um, um, a, a network in the company, like a, a domain controller, um, um, one, two machines and domain accounts. One is machine of IT administrator. One is a machine of, uh, um, or even two, just two VMs. One is uh, the domain controller and one is the, one is a, an employee inside this company. He has a domain account and you test everything from there. Try to go from this machine to the domain controller and take over and do all the steps possible. Uh, maybe you will not be able to simulate everything, but you can simulate some parts of it. You can simulate even just from one VM, you can simulate the initial access, you can simulate the maintaining resistance, the privilege escalation, and show how all of this work and how these techniques are being used on one VM, just one VM to test all of that on as it's playing as a victim. So it's always possible to simulate that. Um, so... Um, so uh, some some people ask so how I can get experience without getting experience getting experience doesn't mean that or the, the years of experience that's required in every job is not always the, the years of experience you worked inside a company you can have this experience by having your blog for one year you're writing in your blog adding different information, writing uh, open source tools, uh, testing uh, different attacks, simulating attacks, researching about attacks, uh, and so on. So your your experience needs to be the practical experience. This is what they want. And I will tell you a secret. How companies really create their years of experience is based on what they imagine the, the level of knowledge you have. If I want someone, if I will bring him inside the team, he will know what to do. That's what I want. I don't want somebody to train him from the beginning. Oh, that means this person is two years of experience. That's how they create the years of experience. They look at what's exactly the, the requirements. We want someone who is able to be plugged in in the team without long training, just two months of training to understand the systems, and he can work by himself. That's what we want. Uh, this person is equal to them equal the HR sees these requirements and convert it in the job description as two years of experience or one year of experience. If you are, if you have the practical experience that you can be plugged in inside a company, inside a team, and able to do your job without lots of learning and without need to, okay, how Kali works, how to understand Kali and start searching about all of that. If you are that ready, you have the one, two years experience that's required in this job. So make sure that you show that. You show that you have the practical experience that gets you in. Um, so what are the resources? First, the OSP has so many different resources. I will not cover that, but there's lots of different courses that teach uh, OSP that teach the same agenda. Lots of different courses, lots of different material, or you can get the official training and the OSP training is good. Um, and that will teach you the traditional penetration testing. Uh, then uh, you will need to learn about the EBT attacks, the, the actually the real target attacks and how they look like. There is a, um, in GitHub, there is a, a profile called EBT notes and this EBT notes, um, covers so many different articles about so many real attacks. Articles have been created by Symantec, by Trend Micro, by FireEye, by ESET, by Kaspersky, so many different companies talking about these EBT groups. Um, so you can go to this 
uh, you can start reading these reports one by one and see how they craft their attack, what are the commands they are using, how they move from one step to another, what's the how they what's their initial access, how they uh, like they, they send a spear phishing uh, um, email or they send a spear phishing uh, uh, email with a link or with an attachment or with a malicious document, how they do craft their attack, uh, what's their malware is doing and uh, how this malware maintaining persistence, how it's uh, escalating privilege if that's talked about. There is so many articles. It's a hit and miss, this article. Some of them are in details. Some of them are not. Make sure that you check them out and don't run away from uh, the first uh, article. As well, this same EBT groups, these EBT groups has numbers. Uh, FireEye always use numbers like EBT1, EBT35. Uh, Semantic, let's say they use uh, names like Fancy Beer, um, I don't know, uh, uh, Fancy Kittens or uh, Cute Kittens, I don't know, whatever they name them. Um, you can search online and you can find which name represents which number, uh, like uh, Fancy Beer is uh, EBT35, for example. Then take that number, EBT35, go to Meter Attack Navigator, you can search in Meter Attack Navigator, you will see it in GitHub, and take each uh, EBT um, number and you can find all there. You can select liars, say, okay, I want the EBT35, and then you select EBT35 and he will show you all the techniques that this attack has used along all the 160 techniques that's included in Meter Attack. So you can know exactly what they did step by step, moving from initial access until they took until the, they took over the organization. So combine this EBT notes, which tells you how the attack looked like with Meta Attack where and the, with the Meta Attack Navigator who tells you exactly what's the name of the technique they use and combine them to have a full understanding of each attack. Now you understand the attack, you need to learn how to simulate them. If you go to Meta Attack Knowledge Base uh, in this link, Meta attack, uh, attack .meter org slash techniques slash enterprise. You can see all the different techniques, what is, uh, what they are, the description about them and how to defend against them, how to simulate them. So many information about them. Um, so make sure that you, uh, go to that link as well and follow these steps to learn about the real attacks and how they work. Uh, also, uh, there is a, so there's a really good book called Advanced Petition Testing, Hacking the World's Most Secure Networks. And it's about different stories um, um, an advanced petition tester went through to simulate different attacks to um, to test security of different companies from ETMs, from, um, from different organizations. Make sure you read it and understand all the different uh, techniques they use. And use the open source tools as well. Uh, there's... Uh, Caldera, for example, which uh, has uh, different ways, different uh, different ways to simulate all the different types of meta attack techniques, from um, from initial access to bridge escalation to maintaining resistance to uh, to exfiltration and uh, network discovery and so on. And he has each of these techniques. He has the the exact command that he uses to simulate this. So take these commands out, understand them, and learn from them. So you can use the open source tools to learn how to simulate these attacks. There are so many other resources as well online. Make sure that you t you search for these tools and know how to, uh, how to find different attacking tools and simulate them, understand how they work, and, and you know, model them. Um, also, when you are testing attacks as against an organization, you will need multiple vehicles. You will need domain controller. You will need a, a, an employee machine, uh, a machine for an IT administrator, and you you want to test how to go from one machine to another to a third. Um, Ali Salah is saying, "Could you please do it by yourself? Which exactly?" Uh, you mean the Caldera commands and techniques? Um, it's there. It's open source. You just have to read them and understand them. Um, uh, any idea how mapping logs to meta techniques? We'll talk about that in the blue team part. Um, so, um, can someone write links and share it on Facebook group? I will share the slides on the Facebook group. Uh, and as well on email, so make sure that you uh, you just focus now, and all the links will be there. So, 
there is a, a cloud platform called Azure. It's uh, provided by Microsoft. And this cloud, it just needs your own Hotmail uh, email, uh, your, your Hotmail account, you create a free account on Azure. And when you create a free account on Azure, he gives you $170 of credit. Azure as a cloud platform allows you to create unlimited number of virtual machines. You can create a domain controller, which is Windows, let's say 2012, Windows Server 2012 or whatever. Then you create your own uh, employee machine, um, like a Windows 10 home machine or professional, then another machine for the IT support, let's say, and create your own domain controller, create your own um, domain accounts, link all of them together, and then start uh, start testing all the attacks, start hacking one of them. Imagine that he's an employee who will click on any email or any link and simulate the whole attack, how the whole attack will look like. Start using the commands you have, you have already gathered uh, from Caldera. Start uh, using them, start using the different techniques you have learned through the EBT nodes because they also have lots of commands you can collect. Start, use all of these commands yourself sorry, and test your attack on this uh, Azure uh, system. You can have these machines until your $170 credit finishes, and you can test these attacks every uh, every now and then until you you master these techniques and um, and until your credit finish, basically. Um, replicate all of these attacks yourself, and um, as I told you, research in your ABT notes for commands and techniques. Uh, create your own cheat sheet from all the commands you can collect from different EBT uh, groups, from uh, malware analysis reports, from Caldera commands, from different tools that are there from different articles and blogs. Create your own cheat sheet of commands. Uh, what you will do to, to for initial access, how you can uh, simulate each of the meta attack, what are your commands, how to, to do defense evasion, where you can bypass defenses, bypass security logs, and so on. Um, so that's for the read team. Any questions so far about this part? Um, I will check the Facebook. Um, wow, we're already 45 minutes. Um, can we know can we know details about EBT groups? Um, there are EBT groups are basically gangs that um, do uh, different attacks like professional hackers for hires, um, uh, nation state like uh, um, you know intelligence agencies like Russia, US, uh, China, North Korea, and so on, and different groups like that. Uh, these gangs or these groups they craft their attack. And so many of these attacks have been investigated, have been analyzed, and there's reports online about these attacks, how they, they, how they went through step by step, all the exploits they have used, how their malware work, what, how they maintain resistance, how they scrape rivers, sometimes how they, they do lateral movements. Um, all of these are written uh, in so many different articles around uh, the internet. Um, EBT Notes is a source, a repository that collects all of these reports for you to be able to read them and to access them uh, easily. So make sure that you check it out. It's not the only source of these articles. You can just search online, but it's a really great source for so many articles that have been collected until today. Um, Uh, the MCSE is a good Windows administrator. Yes, but it's too detailed for what you need. Uh, the certificates for IT administrations mostly are too detailed. Uh, the, M the MSCE uh, is really, really in-depth in Windows administration. You don't need to be a real administrator. You just need to understand Windows, how the operating system works. You need to understand registry, process, threads, uh, surfaces. Uh, how to change IP, what's IP, what's uh, what's uh, default gateway, uh, what's the domain uh, or DNS, how to set all of these things out. You know, the, this basic administration, not in-depth administration. Myself, I'm not an in-depth uh, Windows administrator, neither Linux, but I know how to navigate through them. And I'm more of a super user for operating systems and for Windows and Linux. And as well, I know how they work uh, internally. So, um, could you please record this video? It's recorded and it will stay there on my YouTube channel. Don't worry about it. So, um, as we said, 
create your own attack lab, replicate these attacks yourself and search for ebt nodes, uh, search inside ebt nodes for commands, techniques, and create your own cheat sheet from them. That's for prediction testing. Uh, now we'll move to um, 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 now we'll move to blue team. So blue team. We have covered for two days blue team, one for the for the defense, for the log analysis and um and instant response, and one for uh, malware analysis. Um and as well we covered in Sunday the malware analysis and also advanced attacks, which is file attacks, fileless attacks, and as well uh, target ransomware. Now we'll be covering the blue team. What we have learned so far. Uh, we learned how attacks are getting detected in the first time through network, through different uh, logs like host logs, uh, EDRs, uh, endpoint detection response, and so on. And um, and what exactly we are monitoring for? What are the logs we are looking at and what we want to know out of these logs? And this is a very important point. We also learned how to perform link analysis and search for clues inside um, inside these logs and correlate this information together to understand the attack. We also saw um, a log from a real attack on a Drupal uh, website, a Drupal CMS uh, website, and how the whole attack uh, worked. And we, we, we covered the logs and Splunk uh, in depth how we can do it. Um, uh, question how to get started with learning malware analysis. We'll talk about that very soon. Um, also, we learned how to perform in-depth in investigation on a on a machine that's behaving suspiciously or have some suspicious activities through the logs. How we can do an in-depth investigation using live forensics. Uh, with forensics, we learned how to look for prefetch. We look how to to uh, check the network with using Microsoft Network Miner. We use Process Hacker to investigate the process a bit more in depth, and so on. So. Um, also, we learned in Blue Team that uh, to understand, um, uh, we understood that learning incident response or threat hunting, digital investigation, malware analysis doesn't require to learn SOC. There's so many people who are asking what I, what I should do for SOC Tier 1 or for SOC Tier 2. For SOC, you don't need to work in SOC to work in answer response or malware analysis. There's so many people go for SOC as the first step and they spend years in it. And then they spend more years to, to learn uh, answer response after. So they spend three, five years learning SOC and then they start learning uh, um, digital forensics or malware analysis or answer response after that, which takes them even more time. SOC does not really has so many things in common with um, uh, with incident response and, and digital forensics or malware analysis. Is there is of course things in common, but not as much. The problem with SOC is that the when you work in SOC, the organizations or the companies they push you to learn products, to learn the products and the tools rather than learning the concepts or the general knowledge. And I saw that with my friends that I tried to help them. Uh, and they are, they sink inside this ship. They told them, oh, learn how to use Trend Micro. Learn, uh, take this Trend Micro product trainings. Take this uh, Juniper trainings. Take this training and this training and this training. All about different products that's used inside the organization. And the companies that provide this, uh, these products to this company, they provide those trainings. Trend Micro provide trainings on how to use Trend Micro products, how to maintain the products, how to monitor, uh, say, for security events inside these products, they teach them. But this knowledge is really useful for you. It's really important for the growth of your career. They just learn you how to use tools. But if you just focus on tools, tools expire, tools change, products change, and you will be gone with the, with the product. But to be able to grow in your uh, in your in cybersecurity, you need to focus on the general knowledge. What is in common between Trend Micro and all antiviruses? What you can learn about how antivirus actually work? And once you understand this knowledge, you will understand any uh, any different um, uh, any different tool. You will understand Trend Micro, Semantic, McAfee, any product. You don't need to focus on the on the products or the tools. Focus on the concepts and how these tools actually work. Um, 
Um, also, as we, we said about the SOC and we'll keep you learning the products, so try to shortcut that. Try to not work in SOC as a phase. Try to jump directly to instant response, digital forensics, or model analysis. That's what I did, and that's what I teach my students to do. Um, so, um, there, there will always be a demand for SOC, but SOC for, for companies are a commodity. People who work in SOC, they are a commodity. They hire them, they fire them, they take very low salary, they are not seen as an expert. I, I give you this advice as a brother, as somebody who, who I saw lots of people going through this and I didn't like it. And I have passed all of that through by working directly in malware analysis, building my skills in malware analysis directly and work in that field. That's what I did. Even if there's not as many job in malware analysis as in SOC, I was able to get the job that I want. Even if there's only three jobs were there, I was able to get one of them because I built my skills in that field. And they focused all my time and effort to build my skills only in malware analysis and instant response, not in the SOC. And I didn't waste years working in a low job, low salary, and as well, something will not help me for the growth for my uh for my future. Uh, this is my advice. Uh, it's absolutely up to you to follow the advice you like, but that's my own advice to you. Um, so, digital forensics. Um, lots of people don't really understand uh, digital forensics. We, um, I have been, uh, we have covered the live forensics in the, in the training, um, but digital forensics, there is Two different types of digital forensics. I wanted to cover it here because it's a, it's a topic that I wanted to add in the training. Uh, there's two different types of digital forensics. There's one for crime investigation, which we don't care about today, or at least both of us. You can work in the crime investigation as much as you want, but for us, it's not what we are working for. We are working for cybersecurity attacks. Uh, the digital investigation or digital forensics of cybersecurity attacks. When you're working for digital forensics, digital forensics is not about, is not a really complex field of understanding how every, um, how the hard disk work, how the, uh, the uh, how the hard disk and the MFT and the structures and, and the FAT32 and the FAT64. And there's tools that will tell you that. Of course, this knowledge is important, but these tools will give you all this information. You will not read the desk byte by byte. What you need to learn about digital forensics is very, very simple. And digital forensics is really a simple science. You need to know what questions you have to answer by your investigation. If there's, um, if there's any un, uh, program run at that time, if there's any malicious document have been opened, if there's a suspicious email the attacker has opened at that time, is there's this, is there's that questions you need to answer and what are the clues that you can use to answer these questions i want to see if there's any program has been executed on 31 of on 31 of, uh, of march uh, then i will check the clues i will check is the briefage files or the shim cache or the or, you know there are different things inside operating systems different clues the attacker leave he doesn't maybe he's not fully aware of them but these clues can help can lead you to his malware to him to what uh, to this person uh, to who this person is it's like a real crime investigation where you leave a, a footprint or a fingerprint or uh, some different um, evidence here and there. These clues are all known. We know them in digital forensics. They have you can find a cheat sheet with all the clues you might find in a, in a Windows system or Linux system. And then once you know the clues you want to look at, then what tools can help you analyze these tools or extract this extract these clues, analyze these clues and understand them. Uh, example: If I want to analyze a malware has been run on thirty one of uh, of March, then the, this is the question. Uh, if there's any suspicious uh, program has run at that time, this is the question. The clues, I will look at the briefage files. Um, the tools I will use, uh, explore.exe, and I will go to see Windows briefage. There are some tools that do the briefage analysis. Uh, maybe I will use them, maybe not. Just to, to go to explore.exe and go to that folder and see what are the files that have been executed at that time. Um, Another example, 
Um, I want to know if there is any malware that tried to change its creation date and time to hide its presence. Some malware, they are created, let's say, of uh, today, the 2nd of April, but they don't want to show that they are the last file has been created in the system or the last exe file. They change their date to, let's say, 2009. They have been, as they have been created, 2009. So they can hide and they can bypass defenses. So this is a question I have. Is there is any malware that try to change its uh, date and time? This is the question. Now, what are the clues I will use? I will use uh, a file time, a file name, date time stamps. Um, there is for every file, it has a creation date and modified date and so on. Also, its file name has its own a creation date and a modification date. So the file and its name both have different timestamps for creation, for modification, for access and so on. And most of malware, they change their file date and time stamp. They change the, the file creation date or modification date. Uh, but they, they forget to change the file name, uh, date and time, which you can use to detect, uh, to detect if there's any malware trying to change its own date. Um, tools you can use, this is the clues that you will use, and uh, the tools you will use to look for these clues will be, let's say, autopsy or MFT, uh, MFT parser or whatever the tools you, you like to use. Um, uh, so I see um, um, Abarna is saying, worthy advice, thank you. Uh, Sam John is, using, is saying, user activity, file system activity, MFT, program execution, browser forensics, um, all of the different uh, stuff he's talking about. Uh, Prefetch on the server doesn't provide any information because of information of recorded numbers, of course. But here's the thing, right? And I want to simplify the whole thing. It's all about know what the question, know how to answer, what are the clues you can look at to answer that question, and look for these clues inside the machine. Um, Prefetch on the server does not provide any information because of limitations of record numbers, maybe on the servers, but on the users and the employees' machines, do, it does, and it is very useful. So um, it's not only about servers, but anyway, the thing is that um, if you don't know what the questions to answer in the first place, you will not know, you will not understand um, Digital forensics. Digital forensics is not about knowing all the clues and how all the systems, how the desk works, how the registry files exactly works. There are tools to analyze them. But what you need to, to know, all the clues you might find, and more importantly, what the questions that you will that you will you will answer using these clues. Um, where does digital forensics expert work? Is it wanted? Um, so organizations, there are different types of organizations. Um, the security team in any organization is, they have different level of maturity. Some only have SOC team. And when there's attack, they give, uh, they, they bring another company to analyze the attack. Then there is um, uh, companies who have a SOC and incident response team or SOC tier two, but they call it incident response. And this team is still not very mature, but they have a person who analyzes logs, who look for anything suspicious, who does the investigation himself, and he also uh, does the eradication, containment, and everything. To work in, 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 that, in that job, you will need to have a little bit of digital forensics background, as well as a little bit of malware analysis. And we'll talk about why malware analysis now. And the third level, other organizations may be bigger or more mature, they have also um, a digital investigation team where it's a team, it's an incident response team where they able to investigate attacks and eradicate them. They might take quite some time to investigate an attack. So there is a machine that has something suspicious. They go to this machine, collect lots of information like memory dump, or they do live forensics like how we did in this training, or they collect some information like briefetch, just collect the briefetch and leave, or collect these files and leave, you know, and do the investigations on their own to make sure that um, they understand the attack fully. Um, Name any companies that 
focuses on digital forensics. There are there are companies who work in incident response and digital forensics that provide these services, and there are a lot. I cannot name a specific one. FireEye, for example, Mandiant. Mandiant is known for digital forensics. Semantic, so many different companies. But there is also organizations that have a team that they have digital forensics as part of the team. It's a team for incident response and digital investigation. This team is able to investigate attacks, which means that they are able to look for the network activities, do log analysis, do digital forensics, do malware analysis. They do the whole attack. And each one in this team is specialized in one thing and also knows about the other things. So he knows, like, if you work there, you will know how to do log analysis. You understand the incident response process. You understand how malware works. Maybe you don't know how to analyze a malware, but to understand how malware works. And you are really good in digital forensics. Somebody else who uh, has a little bit of information about digital forensics, a bit about log analysis and incident response, and is good in malware analysis. Someone else who is experts in log analysis, bucket forensics, and network forensics. And these work together in a team where they able to, to deal the investigations. Terrible is a good example about that and other teams as well. So, um, so I have been working on cybersecurity, but digital forensics applies occasionally, Digi um, unless it's required. It is good to have that knowledge, especially during red team activity, of course. But here's the thing. Um, what I, I see myself, and I understand your experience, but what I see myself, I don't see a full disk forensics. This I really see. Someone who go take a complete copy of the whole desk and, and, uh, and start doing his digital forensics. What I see is that people collect artifacts from different machines and analyze them, whatever that's a memory dump or even just some information. Just collect some files, maybe through an EDR like uh, Carbon Black. Carbon Black has the ability to perform some level of investigation to contain the machine isolated from the network and do some investigation on it. You can execute some commands, collect some files. You can even, outside of Carbon Black, you can use PowerShell, collect some information and do some analysis. One of the known tools, I think it's called, um, it's created by Crawl, it's called CAPE. And CAPE, K-A-P-E, which uh, does collect lots of information from a machine, lots of forensics information, very lightweight, and you can do investigation on them on your site with uh, with ease. Um, so I don't see full digital forensics, but a level of digital forensics is needed. At the end of the day, digital forensics, you need to understand the questions you want to answer and what are the clues. Maybe these clues are just small files that you can collect or small information you can test. And as well, what are the tools that can help you do exactly that? Um, so, um, so as you advise, I have to find insert response or malware analysis opportunity, not so analysis. That's my advice. Um, my own humble advice, you can follow it or you can, uh, or you cannot. Um, and as well, build your skills indirectly in incident response, malware analysis, or digital investigation in general. Do not focus uh, on the SOC. That's my advice. There's so many people who advise you to go through the, the regular way of working three or five years in SOC, then move to something else. But I will tell you, you don't need to. Um, with malware analysis, you you don't need any better experience in programming. You don't need any special prerequisites. You don't need to really become expert in SOC or in response work and malware analysis. And we saw that in the training um, we covered last weekend, we saw that we were able to extract lots of information from basic string search or some behavior analysis when we run the malware and look at the activities that it does. We also were able to find um, lots of Clues, or it's like we, it's all about finding clues, exactly like log analysis. It's all about finding some clues inside all this massive log. Here in manual analysis is finding clues inside all their behaviors, inside all the behavior activities, inside all the strings, or inside even the code. Searching for suspicious or interesting activities, and we that's all what's manual analysis about. It's not about reading the whole code or understanding every single assembly 
instruction what it does to be able to understand the or collect information about this malware it's all about finding clues inside that code um why malware analysis is important so lots of people they think malware analysis is only about the jobs of malware analysis but the truth is you only see the real attack through the attacker's malware or through the attacker hacking tools or through the commands they're executing. All the partial code is executing, all the, all the different samples he drops, all the hacking tools he use, all of them are considered malware. If you don't understand malware, you don't understand 80% of the attack. So make sure that you, re the malware analysis is kind of the foundation that you will need to understand incident response, to understand log analysis, to understand forensics, because this is, where the attack comes from. This is what we see. What you do in digital forensics is to find the malware. What you do in incidents and log analysis is to find the commands, find the information about this malware through the logs, finding the CNC through the logs, finding the, um, finding how the malware works through the logs, through, you are, most of what you see is actually the malware. That is the actual, that's the actual attack, the, the malware in every sing, single steps. From task from a scheduled task to the actual to the to the exe uh, file to a malicious document to a PowerShell command, all of this is malware. All of this is what malware analysis uh, covers, which is really the foundation for most of the attacks in cybersecurity. Um, so. Successful instant handlers, threat hunters, and digital forensics, they, they understand uh, the malware internally and how it abuses the system. So, this is what we have learned in the training. Now, what are the next steps? What I should learn? Um, as well, you have you need to still have the same prerequisites. We covered the IT administration and understanding of network protocols. You need to know how real attacks look like, exactly what we said about Red Team. And you see how they get very similar because you both, Red Team and Blue Team, both try to protect against the same attacks. So you need to understand how real attacks look like, but this time, know what clues they leave in the system, whatever in logs, in whatever in, um, in files, whatever in registry entries, uh, in, uh, in different forensics artifacts, Whatever they leave in the system, you need also to know how to perform log analysis and search inside for clues inside the affected systems. Still, you need to learn EBT attacks um, and, and meter attack. Uh, you need to detect every attack, every meter attack technique that you, that you see in this map. You need to be able to detect them through the logs, through packet analysis, through digital or memory or live forensics and through malware analysis. You need to know how you can detect these attacks through these different phases. You might see this technique in the log, next time you see it in the memory uh, in the memory dump, third time you see it in the backend analysis, fourth time you see it inside the malware using these techniques. So you need to understand how you can detect these techniques in different formats. Um, we will talk about the resources very soon, as well you still need to learn Bash and PowerShell. Uh, it's still it's optional, but it's optional between optional and necessary because PowerShell you will use it a lot in incident response. You will use it with PowerShell remoting to collect lots of information, to test different things inside the system, to collect artifacts, and to uh, to even run an application to collect information for you. Um, there is this tool called Immunity Debugger. Immunity Debugger is good, but it's old now. Uh, there's x64 debugger. We'll talk about the tools very soon. Um, my advice, my advice in blue team, focus on the trending attacks, the real attacks. Don't focus on the any malware you see everywhere or samples have been created by the author of the book, like in a practical malware analysis. It's a great book. I don't say no, it's a really good book, but this malware has been written by the author and has been really old. You need to see how real attacks, like how Emotet works, how WannaCry works, what exactly they do and how they, uh, how they craft their, their, uh, their attack. Um, you need to learn malware, at least understand malware, and learn malware analysis to, to know the foundation of all of these attacks. If wherever you want to work in digital forensics or incident response or malware analysis, you need to learn malware analysis. Um, um, I'm not sure about this question, malware analysis field under security, under security analysis field. Not sure about if this is a question or a comment. Um, 
Do I need to be a pen tester before starting Blue Team? Uh, no. Uh, it's uh, it's in, it's important to learn a little bit about how penetration testing work, but you don't need to be a pen tester to to be an instant handling. You will learn the same. The the thing is that there's so many so much in common between red team and blue team. You both will learn how the attack works, how real attack works. You will learn about the, the metal attack, the the ABT uh, attacks. Uh, you will see all these commands in real life. An analyzing an attack will make you like working blue team will make you a good red team, and working red team will make you in a way understand how blue team should work. Um, it's always will affect each other because. There is the same knowledge, the same base, the same foundation. How real attack works. If I understand how real attack works, I know either to simulate it or to respond to it. It's my choice to learn the tools to simulate it or learn the tools and techniques to respond to it. Uh, you don't need to be a bin tester, but you need to understand the attacks exactly. Um, and again, don't focus on certificates, focus on the practical knowledge. Create your own blog, create your own attack reports, malware analysis reports, investigation reports. Take an, uh, an EBT attack and, and start analyzing it. Uh, don't focus on the products or tools, as the same as I told you before. Focus on the concepts and the knowledge behind these tools. Um, some of the good resources. Uh, Applied Answer Response Book, it's really a good book. Uh, EBT attacks from EBT Notes, we talked about them in the, in the red team. Uh, Meta attack knowledge base, we also covered it. There is also something called Splunk attack range. And Splunk attack range is basically um, a project where you, where they create, uh, your, uh, create a fake company for you inside the Azure or AWS, inside one of these cloud, uh, some fake VMs to test an attack. They use Caldera to attack these uh, VMs and then they use Splunk to detect these attacks. So with this, you can simulate everything. You can simulate a company, then simulate that company is being attacked, and now read the, the logs from these attacks and, and try to simulate being in the blue team trying to analyze these attacks. Also in the Splunk attack range, they give you so many different uh, sources of um, so many different uh, Splunk search queries that you can use to detect so many different meta attack. Uh, there is inside Splunk attack range, there is a security content where it has so many resources for all the different, so many different uh, Splunk uh, queries that you can use to detect each of these attacks. Understanding this query and understanding the technique from meta attack techniques, you can understand how you can detect this attack in the first place, how it's being detected through these logs, through Sysmon logs, or through uh, DNS logs, or through HTTP logs, whatever the logs that's needed to be to detect this attack. Um, so that's a really good source for you. Also, there is uh, samples, uh, EVTX samples you can use to, uh, there's basically each of the meta attack techniques um, there is someone who simulated each of these techniques and collected um, um, event logs, Windows event logs for this attack to show uh, how the, to show you how this attack works. So you can get this uh, event logs and start running the query on them. See if you can able to detect the, the activity, the malicious activity inside of them. They really help you to practice and learn uh, through the logs. This is like a sample logs for you to. Um, to actually do the um, to do the analysis. Um, so what is better in your opinion to begin with working as a red team or blue team? You will choose one and continue with them. So if you choose blue team, you will be a blue team. If you choose red team, you will continue in the red team. So the main the main choice is based on your passion. Uh, if you have passion for both, exactly the same, then blue team has way more jobs than than red team because red team is just testing the the security every now and then. But blue team is people who are working twenty four hour per seven, monitoring the the security controls and make sure that everything is safe. So there's mostly blue team that's needed than blue than red team, if you have the choice. Um, Um, so, 
I will move into the next slide. Uh, for the forensics, uh, there are uh, malware traffic analysis. That's a really good blog that has so many different backups that you can investigate inside, find the malware. It's a good source for malware analysis and for digital forensics. Uh, also, there is a really great book called Inside Response and Computer Forensics, third edition. It's a bit old, but it is really good for digital forensics. I really recommend it. Also for writing your own digital forensics report, that's really good. Uh, Autopsy is a really good tool as well as it has trainings and materials that you can learn from um, volatility cheat sheets. Uh, volatility is a, is a known tool for memory forensics, as a, the most known tool. And uh, this is a good, really good resource for understanding volatility to know what commands to run. Uh, memory forensics is very easy to learn. Uh, if you understand how malware works, you will understand how memory forensics work. And as I told you, to learn, to understand the forensics, you need to understand malware analysis in the first place and understand malware, how they work and what you do and understand more about the, the, the analysis part. Uh, volatility cheat sheets is enough for you to understand uh, memory forensics. Um, if you want to dive deeper, then there's the art of memory forensics, it's really a massive book. It's really, really massive. Uh, this book is a good as a reference and you can dive deeper if you wish. Um, for malware analysis, there is two books that I always recommend, Learning Malware Analysis and Mastering Malware Analysis. And you obviously know why I recommend it because it's my book, uh, but it's really, really a great book. It's a, it's a book that gives you exactly, it's like your malware analysis Bible, like any question you face, you will have an answer inside this book from iOS to IoT malware to Linux malware to Android malware uh, to different scripts from uh, PowerShell, from Visual Basic, from JavaScript. Anything you face, you'll find an answer for. As well, in Windows, it covers everything in way more in depth that can tell you exactly how to, uh, what to look for uh, inside the, inside the BE file, inside the, the, how to unback a malware. There's 10 different ways to unback a malware. It's really a great book. And that's one resource as well. Um, make sure that you check any run, any dot run uh, ma slash malware trends, which will tell you what's the top malware nowadays. That that they are now the top in in the attacks that they do. So make sure that you when you analyze when you write a malware analysis report, focus on this malware. Um, and as well the ABT notes. I think you know the link by now. Uh, a good book um, about reversing and reverse engineering more than malware analysis is called Reversing, a book called Reversing the Secrets of Reverse Engineering. It's a very old book. There's some tools that's already disappeared, but it's a really great book. Uh, so make sure that you take a look at it. Um, another option is beginners.re. It's a book also for reverse engineering. Um, the last book I want to say here is Identifying Malicious Code Through Reverse Engineering. This book is a very small book, 200 something page. The second part of this book is not really good, but the first part is about the Windows internals and I really loved it. And I really like that part, so make sure that you read it for Windows internals and understanding how Windows work. Um, a question says, what about Cuckoo's Handbox for offline malware analysis? Uh, it's good, but it's not great. It's easy to detect sandboxes for malware, that's the first thing, and second is that uh, for us, we use sandbox for triaging, but we don't use sandbox for understanding the, the malware. It's good to have a little bit of information about the behavior of the malware. It's not even the best way to monitor behavior, but it's a good way. And as well, we use uh, strings for basic static analysis, and then we dive into the code analysis. Um, so, uh, another malware analysis reports for exploit writing, uh, there is a resource called corland.pe. It's a really good source. The, these guys, they have also their own trainings. Um, and I don't know if you can afford them. It's mostly on-site trainings for companies mostly, but they have a really good blog and they have really good articles. They started in 2009. This is the first article, but they have so many uh, for, uh, until now. For shell code writing, you can check our Mastering Malware Analysis book, or you can shell, uh, check also shell code writing. Uh, article which I wrote by myself in code uh, project. It's a really good article as well. Um, do you need to learn C++ for malware analysis? No. You need to learn the foundation though. You need to learn to understand the syntax and to understand how the language works. So what's if, what's 
uh, if else loops how they look like but you don't need to dive so deep into C++. Um, and when I teach model analysis, I teach both together. I teach C++ first for a very small amount of time, and then I move into assembly. And then map assembly and C++ together. So this is the instructions in assembly. This is the instructions in C, and this is what, it, what they are doing. So you understand both together. Um, C++ can give you an understanding of how higher level language look like uh, compared to the assembly part but at the end you don't need to be a programmer this is the very important part you don't need to know how to write code you need to understand how to read code this is the most important part um, what's the alternative for cook sandbox free and open source well have your own vm put the malware there and run it and see what it does you have different tools like process hacker Process Monitor, um, Microsoft Network Monitor, and all of these tools to monitor the malware by yourself. That's better, a bit better option, uh, or uh, it's a better option. Cook Sandbox is also an option, but it's not a great option. This is the two options you can go through with behavioral malware analysis. There's also static malware analysis, static code analysis, uh, static basic static analysis, and as well the whole code analysis part. Um, as the technology moving into cloud, AWS and Azure, there is a way for malware analysis to change in the future. I don't see uh, a big change happening so far. Uh, we also don't see that the employees uh, workstations or laptops are becoming uh, all based on cloud, for example. Uh, so we still see that big part of the malware is running on a normal Windows machine uh, or Mac, for example. So um, this is part is not changing anytime soon, I would say. The, the things that might change is the, the, the lateral movement part and all the lateral movement parts and how they can affect the, how they can work in the cloud. Also, we see a use of cloud services to, uh, for initial access, like, um, uh, like um, Office 365 or uh, or uh, Dropbox or Google or Drive or stuff like that, and we see the use of cloud uh, a lot in when it comes to dry, to delivering the model in the first place. Um, what programming languages I need to learn for Red Team? You need to for Red Team if you want to learn a programming language. You the first thing is PowerShell because you will use it a lot. Uh, especially on all the Windows systems, and you will need to learn um, other tools, other scripts are not as important. Uh, depends on what exactly you will be doing. Like if you are web, then you will learn web stuff. But if you are not web, um, it depends. You will create your own tools, then you can use Python, let's say, to create your own automation scripts to automate some parts. Um, but inside the organization, you will use a lot of Bash and PowerShell a lot inside the, the victim uh, organization. Um, for downloading samples for malware, you have any.run, you have hybridanalysis.net, um, you have also contagio.blogpost.com, and um, um, uh, this blog blog is created by, uh, by a third researcher called Mila, and she collected lots of samples from different ABT attacks, collected lots of BCAPs and so on. So you can download them from her blog and she also have the passwords. You just need to email her for the password. Um, there's also samples that uh, Volatility have left for uh, memory samples you can use to analyze different, uh, to, to detect an attack. Uh, there's Crydex, there's Stuxnet, there's uh, different samples. Uh, for reverse engineering, though, if you only practice reverse engineering, there's a challenges.re, which is good for different uh, architecture, for different operating systems like Windows, Linux, uh, whatever. There's also Intel, ARP, and different uh, uh, architectures. Also, there is a crackmeans.cf, which can help you test your uh, reverse engineering skills uh, to crack some applications. The good thing about crackmeans.cf is that they have um, they have crack means from level one to level ten, so you can use any level, and they all have solutions. So you can practice a lot your reverse engineering skills with them. It's not malware, but it's good for reverse engineering. Um, 
checking uh, the Facebook questions. Can I shift from blue team to blue team? It's not as easy. Um, of course you can, but it is better to focus. For me, what helped me in the beginning of my career is that I focused on malware analysis. I focused on that until I nailed it. Doesn't mean that I don't understand how everything else works, but I'm more focused on, on, uh, on malware analysis. If you really want to shift and that's your passion to make a shift, make the shift. It's okay. But if you are planning your career, don't shift. Choose one and stick to it. That's way better for your career. After 5-10 years, you can also advise in other fields, um, which what I do now in nutrition testing. Because I learned answer response for a long time for malware analysis, digital analysis. Now I understand so much about attacks that I'm able to craft also attacks and able to craft the malware, able to create uh, my own hacking tools and able to do the whole attack by myself. Now I'm able to to be there in the red team, but I don't, I, my resume, if I'm sending it to any company, I'm just working in blue team because that's the thing that I have been in my resume for for ages. Uh, is Python useful? It's a useful language. It's the most, if you learn any scripting language apart from PowerShell, Python is the best uh, for malware analysis, for, uh, for, uh, for red team, for blue team. It's the most used language in, in many of this stuff. So, um, that's all the resources that we have covered uh, so far. And um, there is another option. If you want to learn Blue Team, if you want to learn Instant Response, uh, Memory Forensics, and Malware Analysis, this is another option. And if you allow me um, 10 minutes to cover that before we go into the winners, um, I will share with you guys um, a full-fledged training that I have built, a training and mentorship actually, that's built for you guys to build your career in, in Blue Team, in Instant Response, Malware, Memory Forensics, and Malware Analysis. Um, I will share you, with you the, the training and what we exactly have. So this training is basically help you to get a, a really good job in cybersecurity uh, in six months or eight months. Um, and it helps you to it shortcut everything. Why it does shortcut? Because it focuses on give you the exact knowledge that you need to get your first job. It really shortcut this uh, one year of experience that's required by companies and give it to you condensed in six months with so much of uh, of practical uh, real attacks where we cover inside this train. You have seen how I covered real attacks in the Kickstarter your cyber security career, and that's exactly what we do in that training. We cover real malware. All the malware that's inside this training are real malware from Emotet, WannaCry, uh, Sniffula, uh, Valtrack, uh, Stuxnet. We cover real attacks and how they do work. We give you that experience of the real world from this training. We help you through our uh, coaching course. We help you to build your resume as well. We we'll get you prepared for the job interviews. We have even managers there. You can ask them what you should say in an interview with there's me and there's other experts inside every uh, Zoom call. We'll talk about it now. Um, that help you nail any interview that you are coming through and as well all the obstacles you might face uh, in the process of learning. Um, I see lots of people who um, who start learning any of these fields, whatever um, red team or blue team, and they stuck in some points. And when they stuck, they start procrastinating. And what I try to do in this training is that I will be with you, breaking all of these obstacles for you. Anything that you get stuck in, I help you with. I, if you if you don't understand this part, I come and teach you this. If you have a malware you don't know what to do with, I help you with that. Your malware analysis report, I review it for you. With I help you through all the steps. Every step by step, I, I help you with uh, through the process. Uh, this training uh, basically uh, prepare you to work as a malware analyst, to work as an instant handler, to work as a threat researcher. Also with a, with a little bit of information, you can work as a threat hunter. And basically, if you want to work as a security analyst, this prepares you too. Um, it gives you all the knowledge needed to work in a really good job in Blue Team. Not a soft job. 
um, I didn't want to target that. That's not what I'm going for. I want to give you a training. Um, I want to, to get you to a job that you really uh, become a cybersecurity expert. You are seen as an expert and you're getting a really uh, a good salary that reflect that. Um, I bet you have a solid training material. Thank you. And this is, you have seen my training in action and all what you have seen in this uh, in this uh, three days training is just two modules out of 11 modules in that training, like equal in size or quantity to only two modules of what we are covering in this full-fledged training. So how we do that? First, we cover EBD attacks and malware analysis overview. We cover the incident response process, including the bucket analysis, the bucket forensics, which is not covered in the first training. We cover a lot. We, we also uh, we cover log analysis again. We cover Splunk again. We cover more about it. We cover the model analysis process step by step, uh, from basic static analysis to behavior analysis to code analysis. We cover the static and dynamic code analysis in the assembly. We cover the whole assembly part and we simplify it so much with so many different exercises to get you from uh, no programming experience at all, from not even one line in C or assembly or any language to actually be able to analyze malware. We start with a small C++ training and then we go into the assembly training. So we, and with the assembly, we do throw exercises. People ask me, what I, how I can learn assembly? I get stuck. I, I try to learn it, but I get stuck. I'm not able to learn. You need to exercise. And that's what exactly what we do. We get you to learn through exercises. We cover encryption, encoding, manual unpacking of different malware. We cover advanced techniques, process injection, and reversing techniques. We cover memory forensics. Uh, we cover uh, API hooking, shell code and exploits, kernel mode rootkits, and as well we cover threat intelligence and brief intro to machine learning. This training is being updated every single time. Um, so it's really an impressive training. Uh, and by the way, yes, this video is saved. Um, this is uh, Yazid um, Alabad, and this is what he uh, he told me exactly in an email. Uh, this is exactly his words, what he told me. I have finished the Mono Announced Mindset program. That's the old name of the training or the, the older version that only included this uh, videos only. They didn't include uh, anything else, only these modules. And he t he's saying that I have finished this program with full satisfaction. You did a fantastic job with more than 60 hours of hands-on uh, and practice, which makes it one of the rare courses out there. Let me say one of the best courses I have ever had. That's exactly his review on just these modules. But you will not only get that, you will get also my malware analysis uh, lab VM, and it's a lab that's ready to install, uh, ready to import. It's uh, it has over 100 tools. The, these tools are actually installed, and with all the plugins, with all the settings, they're just ready to use. This is the lab that I use for myself, and I'm giving it to you. Uh, it's not like any other lab that you see that's hard to install or just put you the tools and let you do with it. It has all the tools that's needed, that's covered in the training and it's needed, and as well, it's all installed and prepared. Uh, the, the different Python, the Splunk is ready, CyberChef that we have covered and installed, and you have it already in your browser. You open the browser and you see it in the bookmarks, ready to just click and use it. Splunk, the same thing. Everything is ready inside this VM for you. Um, we give you the whole uh, malware analysis lab. It works on VMware, VirtualBox, and we have videos on how to install it in VMware and VirtualBox, how to make it ready and how to make it secure. We as well, uh, the ah, uh, the prerequisites for this training, as we said, the, the basic administration level, understanding of uh, uh, network and, uh, and internet communication protocols, and understanding of cybersecurity terms is the same request as we said for the for the kickstart your cybersecurity career. Exactly the same for this one. Is the um, it's the basic IT administration and network protocols. We also re uh, recover the network protocols and how TCP looks like, how UDP, how all of these protocols look like. So it's really a training from A to Z. We prefer that you have more information about network protocols, but we also cover it um, in the training uh, inside the, the incident response part. Um, what's not in the prerequisites though, 
You don't need programming experience. You don't need assembly or reverse engineering uh, experience because we cover that. You don't need any C++ experience. You don't need ethical hacking experience. You don't need to work on SOC beforehand. And you don't need any certificate before. Um, so um, I see uh, Mansouri saying, I'm really interested in your training, but we cannot do payment online from Tunisia. I'm sorry about that. We can help you if there is an option to for that. We will talk about the payment now. Um, so we also provide the Malranas workbook, which includes so many different exercises. I know that you can't read from the slide, but if you look here, we have um, an exercise for you, a sample to analyze, and as well, we have the solution for this for this exercise. So you're able to test your skills. We have the videos where I walk you step by step on how we analyze a manga, then I give you other more exercises for you to test your skills yourself. And if you're stuck, you can look at the solution as a step by step. If you even don't understand, we will help you through it. So you you exercise really a lot because you exercise with the samples that are in the videos you exercise with the samples that are in the workbook and this workbook is way more than 100 pages with so many different samples and uh, as well um solutions uh, you get this manual analysis book you get the master manual analysis book you get my book delivered to your home for free um and it's really a great book uh, here's some of the what people said about it it's uh, uh, I have completed reading your book and I have to keep it always with me. It's really the best book for manual analysis, even for the experts. Here's um, uh, Lee James, who's one of uh, our students in the training. And here's what he said in one of the Zoom calls we do with the students. Here's what he said by himself. And I took his permission to, uh, to uh, release that video. I'm not sure if I can. Let me increase. Uh um is great okay so um, th there's like literally every single page in this book is like a gold mine of information that uh, you can't you can't find this quality stuff in other oh, places you know and, and colleagues that i work with they say to me like oh how, how do you how do you like Look, how do you spot this kind of exploit? And I'm just like, well, we can we can just look for this signature here, you know. And they're like, oh man, how do you know this stuff? I'm like, well, I know a guy. <laughs> and, uh, they're just like really impressed. This is uh, Lee James and what he really said about this book. He's actually working uh, as a um, um, uh, as an investigation lead and incident handling, uh, incident response uh, team lead. And this is his view about the book. This book. Um, you will get that book delivered to your home uh, for free. And as well, you will get my Malware Analysis Report template. That's a complete template you have to follow to write your Malware Analysis Report in a very professional way. And then focus on how to present that to your company, how to present yourself. If you want to build your own uh, uh, your own resume, your own uh, proof of, uh, of skills to to um, to get into the to 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 get a job in that field to actually impress your hiring manager, this report is the way for it because this report this report template has everything that you need exactly to to show that you understand manual analysis very well and you are very very professional. It has all the questions you need to answer, the tips, the organization, how to organize this and what exactly to write inside your manual analysis report. And not only this, I walk you through it in the Zoom calls we do, which is the, um, uh, we also provide the malware attack, uh, malware analysis real scenarios, which is a full analysis of WannaCry, Immutate, NotBitia, and other malware has been done by, uh, um, 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 by uh, my uh, malware analysis assistant who was working with me. It's called uh, uh, Mahmoud Mursi, and he's really an excellent malware researcher. And this is his full analysis of this uh, three malware. You will see that and you will learn from it. You, you will have the videos, the IDB files, all the resources and material. So you can learn from this analysis and actually model them to, to present something in your resume that proves your skill. 
Um, this is what uh, Samir Khan said about this training. This course is lovely and frankly the best course I've ever taken. Your explanation made me really understand every concept and got me feeling so much more confident in my own abilities. I haven't applied for any job yet because of the job that I'm uh, now uh, working uh, right now in, but I'm sure I'm, I'm surely going to apply and use this knowledge to get into this field of work. But really, this is the best course for Malware Analysis till date and I'm glad I took it. This is what people say about this training and um, and there's so many other things. Uh, lots of people have talked really amazingly about this training. I will not keep reading all of them, but you know how we work, right? As well, we do provide Zoom coaching calls every second Monday. Um, and this Zoom calls where I stay for one to three hours as much as I can with you on a Zoom call, you can share the screen, you can ask any question and I stay until all your questions have been answered. All your obstacles uh, that you face have been removed, the, the samples are stuck in, the parts you don't understand in the training or in any book you are reading or anything. Even um, questions on how to approach managers, what you, should, what you should do, how I can apply for this job, how I can prepare for this interview, what questions should I prepare, everything I help you with in these Zoom calls and they're all recorded so you can get back to them whenever you want. Um, all of this is provided plus also a certificate of, uh, of achievement, certificate of finishing our training. Uh, that's as well you will uh, you'll receive after this training. Um, you'll get all of that. And this is also, I mean, what he said about it. And he was saying, you will not find anyone who shares his experience with you as Amr did. I see it's super important. Without someone who guides you and gives you the full picture, it might take you a few years to learn those skills that we have learned from this program within only a few months. Don't waste your time and build on others' expertise. That's the message that I want to give you through this training. This is exactly the mission of this training is to, to, to not make you reinvent the wheel. Like, Build on what I have learned so far. I give you everything so you can shortcut your learning from where you are until the point, um, until the point that you are actually working in a, in a good company in, in one of the top companies in cybersecurity. And I do everything to help you through that. Um, you have already attended our three days live training or you have seen the recordings and you know how we teach by now. You know my, my style. You know how I teach. If you like what I'm what I'm saying, if you if you learn a lot from this training, this is just a taste of what you will have in the uh, in the malware incident response training. Uh, this is just some of you guys what you have said about this training. A very straightforward, really awesome. Thank you. Um, um, can describe how much this session is amazing. This is just from your chat, guys. This is what people are saying about this training. If you haven't attended, uh, this is Ganesh. Um, Ganesh, if you hear me, I think he's, I saw him somewhere in the, in the chat. Um, those who plan to make a career in cybersecurity and malware analysis, this fundamental training is best for them. This training is not any normal training you mostly learn from Udemy or any other online stuff. It's unique and different. You learn different techniques and tools with hands-on experience. The way Amr Thabit explained manual analysis and its persistence, it's, it was very different level and unique. This training includes everything to kickstart your cybersecurity career and manual analysis career. I attend this training myself and it was a great experience. This is talking about just kickstart your cybersecurity career, which is a very small training, just a taste of what we provide. Uh, the same from uh, Salem. Um, saying that it was a great first session about cybersecurity chain. Um, and how whole simulation works and so on. And, um, and he's saying it's, cr it's true that you need a person to guide you in this field to save, uh, to guide you through this uh, field to save, you, uh, to save your time. Um, thanks again. And I'm really uh, waiting for the other session. That was just about one session in that training. Uh, Muhammad Mahmoud Nawar, um, and he's saying, although I'm already subscribed to the full Maran incident, 
uh, handling training, which is the training that I'm talking about now, I can see that when I attended the free training, the Kickstarter Software Career, I found it super beneficial. I must have it, you, um, you amazingly astonish me every time. I'm so pleased to have you as a mentor and supporter. It, uh, it took it take me a few moments to read the agenda to realize how unique this training is and how you really use your distinguished experience to teach us how attacks happen in the wild. He's part of our full training and he's also was impressed by the Kickstarter cybersecurity career and he is pleased to have me as a mentor and supporter and I'm really pleased to have him as well and um, this is basically the mission I'm trying to, to provide through this training. Um, uh, Sharavan Kumar is saying that he went through many courses and boot camps to learn the real cybersecurity operations, but significant amount of this courses shows all techniques or, or just some better tools. However, the session delivered by Amr Thabit covers the gap and explains me the reality of the industry and the and methodology. I'm personally working in the industry, I uh, got really uh, juicy and interesting knowledge. I highly recommend people to attend this. Um, and the main thing, the way he started was not directly with the tools, but social engineering and the cyber culture methodology, which was superb and unique. And that's what exactly we do as well with the, with the malware incident response training. So this is really, really a valuable training. And you have seen that it's not like anything you see in Udemy or YouTube or any different courses you see online. You take from the, from, you take my, my insight as someone who worked in the industry, who see real attacks, not people who, just read some books and start teaching it. And believe me, nobody is selling on Udemy a course who's uh, actually uh, who's actually working uh, with six figures salary working in one of the top companies like McAfee or or Semantic or Trend Micro. They will not sell their training with ten dollars. They know that they will not sell their expertise with that. What you get is a real expertise, um, and that's what I provide in this training, the same as I did with the Kickstarter Cybersecurity Career. So. That's the training that we do provide. And the actual price of this training is 997. But today, we have three winners for this full training. We have three people who will win this training for completely for free. Um, are you ready to announce the winners of the first three winners of our training? This is the point where you all guys waited. Are you, uh, are you ready to announce the winners? Let me know in the chat. I will not start until I know in the chat if you are guys ready. Um, Ganesh, he say thank you so much, uh, sir. You're welcome. Are you guys ready to know who is the winner of uh, of this uh, uh, of this um, giveaway? Uh, I won't see lots of yeses. Yes, yes. That uh, Renmark, that would be me. I hope so. Uh, let's see. So I don't know who is the winners yet. Um, what we'll do is that I will show you exactly how I will choose the winner and we will run the algorithm, the random number creation tool, whatever algorithm you want to call it, in front of you. And I will know the winner for the first time as well as you. So yes, yes, I see yes, ready, yes, let's go. So uh, here's the, the giveaway list. I have this spreadsheet and I have here in this list, uh, giveaway list, I have uh, around um, 1,500, oh my God, I see a massive number of yeses. Amazing, let's get started. So uh, I, we have 1,570 people uh, in the giveaway list. Some of you guys, your names are mentioned so many times. Uh, yeah, the, the chat's getting crazy, oh my God. That's, that's impressive. Um, so three people will win our full malware analysis uh, incident response training. So uh, I will walk you through the process. So you guys, I just want full transparency here. Uh, there is 1,570 people in this list. I can't show you the exact names because there will be privacy issues, but there is so many of you guys 
uh, all of you guys who shared uh, the the giveaway. I collected all the ta all the the, pro the all the posts that have been mentioned in on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. I took all these mentions. I ran through regex to extract all of your names, and I copied all these names in this giveaway list. Everybody who sent me a screenshot, I wrote his name, his name ten times until even today morning. I did that. Uh, all the people who messaged me. Uh, wrote uh, a review on uh, on the training, a review on the book. I wrote their names 10 times inside this giveaway list uh, for every different testimonial. So um, there's names that are mentioned multiple times, uh, many times, um, 10 times or more. And there's some names that are mentioned once. But whatever, if you shared it everywhere, that doesn't mean you will win. If you didn't share it at all, does that mean you will lose? Um, this giveaway is it's a random number that will be chosen out of all the 1,500. And it's, as you see, it's a it's an algorithm here, right? It's an algorithm. It's a random number will be chosen from one to 1,570. And what I will do is that once I click on announce the winner, the winner will be announced. So three. Two, one, let's announce. The first winner is Sharavan Kumar. Bravo, Sharavan. Congratulations. You have won our full training completely for free. Um, big code is for you. I uh, will be reaching out to you, uh, I think, through LinkedIn and show... Um, show your uh, uh, and give you the the gift by myself or through your email i um, congratulations for winning and let's see if he's actually there um uh, so this is the first winner sharavan kumar the second winner of our free malware incident response training is muhammad atiya he is the winner the second winner, he got the, the the access to our full training completely for free. Everyone now have a one more chance to win the free training. And guys, believe me, this is not the only winners today. This is the top 10 winners, but every one of you guys will have a prize at the end of this session. So make sure that you stay until the end uh, because we will uh, announce all the winners. Uh, System Exploited say congratulations, Sharavan Kumar. Uh, congratulations, Sharavan, and congratulations as well to Muhammad Atiyah. Um, and let's announce the third winner. The third winner and the last winner of our complete training, and this is not the last prize we have, is Ahmad Said. Ahmad Said is the winner for our training. Congratulations, Ahmad Said. Congratulations, Muhammad Atiyah and Sharavan Kumar. Congratulations to all of you. You won the malware incident response training completely for free. You have a full access to that training. Uh, so congratulations to you. Um, we are delighted to have you with us as new students. And uh, yeah, so that's our first uh, three prizes. Now, um, I will just keep it a bit for people to see it. Uh, this is our top three winners. Uh, I took time to really mingle with all of this uh, uh, announce winners and show winners thingy. Now we have Sharvan Kumar, Muhammad Atiyah, and Ahmad Said are winners for our prize. Um, now um, we will get back to the slides. So now we have our three winners. Um, we have announced our first three winners. And now we will go into the second prize. The second prize is our malware analysis and incident response bundle. And this is for the next seven winners. What they will get, they will get advanced precision testing, hacking the world's most secure networks book. They will get the applied incident response book and the master malware analysis book. They will get the three books packaged and delivered to them for free. Uh, they will get the three books for uh, to them for free. Um, delivered to their home, as well as they will have a one-on-one -on -one session with me for half an hour, uh, and I will help them build their career uh, in cybersecurity. So I will see where exactly they are, what exactly the blockages they have, and I will answer any question they have and help them build their roadmap to go from where they are until the point where they want to reach. Whatever they want to build their career in incident response, in manual analysis, in digital forensics, in position testing, I will, give, I will give them the best advice I have 
I will be with them one-on-one, -on -one, listening to them and giving them the personalized best advice. As well, they will get a 50% discount on our malware incident response training. They will be able to get it for only $497 or $98.5 per month for six months, which is a really, really great price. And we have seven winners who will get, um, who will get uh, this uh, prize. Um, advanced petition testing book, applied inside response book, and master manual book. All the three will be delivered to them. They will have as well the one-on-one -on -one session with me. They will have 50% discount on our malware and response training. Are you guys excited about this? This is a really, really uh, great bundle. And now we'll announce the next seven winners who will win the malware analysis and answer response bundle. So let's get started uh let me go to it okay um so the first winner of the malware analysis and incident response bundle is muhammad saleh he's our first winner congratulations muhammad saleh you won the malware answer response, malware uh, analysis and answer response bundle, which includes the three books delivered to your home, as well, uh, it includes um, it includes a one-on-one -on -one session with me and 50% discount on our malware answer response training. Um, this is the first winner. The second winner is Digital Surgeon, a uh, digital surgeon. Uh, on Twitter, this is his Twitter handle. I couldn't get his name because of the regex, but we will reach out to him on his handle. And he won our um, malware analysis and instant response bundle. Um, Sharavan Kumar is saying, very much excited. Thank you, Amr. Thank you for uh, for joining. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for everything. We are happy to have you with us in the full training. Um, so... Um, our fifth winner is Ranmark Andrada. Uh, I remember that you uh, you were saying, uh, yes, I see you in the chat. Wow, book. You have received that. You will get the advanced um, petition testing, uh, blind answer uh, response, and malware analysis, mastering malware analysis book. All the three delivered to your home for free. You will get a one-on-one -on -one session with me. And as well, you will get... Um, uh, you will get uh, um, um, you will get a fifty percent discount on the mastering and the malware and response training. You will get all of that, um, and we will be in contact with you shortly. So this is our fifth winner. Congratulations, and Mark is putting lots of hearts in the chat. Congratulations for winning, and now we'll announce the sixth winner. Um, or the seventh, I think. One, two, three, five. Yeah, the seventh winner. Um, it's Salim, Salim uh, Al um, Al Bahwar, I think. Uh, Salim, you you have won. Congratulations, you have won the Malware Analysis and Response Bundle. Um, uh, congratulations and thank you for all the reviews and everything you have done. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for for participating in this giveaway. Uh, you are. Uh, you will receive uh, a one-on-one -on -one session with me, all the three books, and as well a 50% discount on our training. Um, our eighth winner is Basim Hussain. Congratulations, Basim Hussain. You have won with us. Uh, you will get the three books. You will get the Manu Analysis and Response Bundle. Um, and the ninth winner is Adil Tuati. I think that's if I pronounce it correctly. Congratulations, Adel. You have won as well the Manor Answer Response, the Manor Analysis Answer Response Bundle, which includes the three books, one one session with me, and 50% discount. And the last winner. Now the last winner. And not last but not the least, because all of you guys are winning today, and I will share with you uh, the, the prize that I give that I um, that I have planned for you all of you guys today. But before that, we'll announce our last winner for the malware uh, analysis and answer response bundle, which is uh shell uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I hope I pronounced correctly, but shell Pesh Trividi has won our last prize. Congratulations. Congratulations for all the winners today. 
Uh, congratulations to all of you guys, to Sharvan Kumar, to Muhammad Atiyah, to Ahmad Said for winning the full training and for all the other winners for winning the Marvel Analysis and Insta Response Bundle. You all got 50% discount on our training plus the three books plus as well the uh, one-on-one -on -one session with me. So congratulations to all of you guys. I can't wait to see you uh, with us and I can see, or can't wait to see you the top three w inside the training. Um, I will be in contact with you guys, but you can directly contact me if you want, if you are uh, really excited about it. Uh, I hope you are excited as much as I'm excited for you guys. So um, you can message me directly, so it will be easier for me. But if not, I will be able to reach to the three of you guys and all of you 10 guys, I will be able to reach for reach out to you and show you um, and give you the, the prize. Um, that's for the the top 10 winners, but all of you guys are winning today. And here's the prize. So back to the slides. This is the three winners, but now we have a prize also for you. Um, There's a prize for everyone. And we decided that today and for a complete week, we will provide, um, actually it uh, will provide a 20% discount on our malware instant response training. And really, we are not the type of people who do uh, promotions on trainings. People who know me, they have been waiting for ages until I have one promotion in, in a blue moon. And today, because you guys have joined the Kickstart uh, Cybersecurity Training, I decided that not only I will give you the Kickstart your Cybersecurity Training for free, but as well, I will provide you a 20% discount to get to the full training and actually build your career in, uh, in malware analysis and instant response. And this is a really great start to, for all this year, for the, for 2021 to make it a really great year for you. I can see by September or by the end of this year, you are a malware uh, analysis expert. You are an incident response expert. You have been already, if you're in the middle of an interview process or you are close to get your offer for a job in malware analysis or incident response, being seen as a cybersecurity expert and actually become uh, actually getting a salary that you dream of, getting a job that you dream of, and get through all of this newbie phase, this phase where you don't know what to do, the phase where you don't know what exactly you should be doing, what are the, uh, and going through juggling between lots of resources, you'll get out of all of this, out of this rat race and procrastination and uh, being stuck to the point where you are actually an expert. And you are uh, you are confident in your skills. You have already different jobs you are applying to, different interviews you have already passed, and they are interested in you. They are providing a package for you, an offer for you to work with them, different companies that you really would dream to work with them. That's, I can see that by the end of this year, that will be your future. Uh, of course, everything by the God wish, but that's that's the that's the goal. That's what I will help you for. This is what you will aim for. This is if you join us today, you mean that success by the end of this year. There is nothing is for guarantee, but this is the exact plan. This is the roadmap that I will take you. This is what I take my students with, and that's what should be you as well. So I will have this giveaway runs until uh, actually it's 9th of April until next Friday midnight uh, GMT time. You can go to maltrack.com slash join and uh, provide this coupon giveaway and you will join the train. You know how I teach by now. It's not like something new. You don't know me for the first time. At least most of you guys. You know how I, how I provide my training. You know how this works. All what you need to do is now is to take the next step. You see how I teach in the Kickstart your cyber security career. You see how people were so excited and so bummed up with this training. This is exactly the same journey. You will continue it with me through uh, six months of training. This is more than 40 hours of content plus the, the, plus the workbook and all the, 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 all the different Zoom uh, calls that we do with you to help you build your career in that field. I will be with you every Zoom call, every um, every call we do together. And it's like 10, 15 people who attend this, uh, this Zoom call. We answer all your questions in Arabic, in English, whatever the language we can we can speak. I, I keep staying in this Zoom call until all questions have been answered, until everybody is already done and is already uh, planned his next steps in the, in the next weeks to come. 
I stay with you, answer all the questions about the training, outside of the training, anything inside cybersecurity, anything I can answer. And it's not only me who's attending, there's multiple experts. Um, inside, like uh, um, the regional director and big uh, cybersecurity companies working and are actually attending the, the sessions with us. There is also uh, different managers, different experts. You will meet them and you will get the answers directly from them and you will learn from them. Um, And uh, Renmark uh, is saying, don't forget that if you achieve great in life, give back to the community. That's what exactly my mission. And that was my mission in the Kickstart Your Cybersecurity Career and with this giveaway. And thank you guys for all the participation. Make sure now you join this training. Here's what you get. Our 11 modules, the ABT attacks and malware analysis overview, incident response process, malware analysis process, static and dynamic code analysis and assembly, encryption, encoding, malware, uh, manual and backing, process injection, memory forensics, uh, API hooking, shell codes and exploits, kernel mode rootkits, and last threat intelligence and machine learning. All of that we cover in our training, as well you will get the Malware Analysis Lab VM, it's Malware Analysis and Incident Response VM, has tools for both, the Malware Analysis Workbook, the Mastering Malware Analysis Book, you will be delivered to your home for free, you will get the Malware Analysis Report Template, you will get as well the Real Scenarios, which is a full analysis of WannaCry, Emotet, NotBitty and others, you will get my coaching calls. And this, this helps you to learn to work in an incident response in digital forensics or in, uh, in in digital investigation and malware analysis in SOC tier 3 in threat hunting all of that that this training helps you uh, to prepare for this training is, keeps being updated the 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 first phase was only the videos now we have so much more in this training and we keep adding more and there's way more to come in the next uh, three months which is the next phase the the kickstart your cybersecurity career will be added as well to this training there will be more information to come to this training so make sure you join now from maltrack.com slash join uh, with coupon giveaway and you will you'll get it with 797 or 157 dollars per month uh, for six months and this coupon will stay until next friday midnight gmt time make sure that you join before that because in our uh, in uh, Kickstarter your cybersecurity career, I saw lots of people who have a problem. Oh, I thought it's uh, it's uh, 11:30 midnight uh, GMT plus one, but now it's GMT. Oh, I missed that. Oh, I was one hour late, or I was uh, half an hour late. This is exactly uh, Friday midnight uh, GMT time. The the coupon will expire, so make sure that you catch this offer. And we don't do these coupons almost never like it's really very rare when we do provide a promotion on the training so make sure you take advantage of it um last thing thanks for all the people who joined the giveaway thank you all i really appreciate your work i really appreciate your sharing all, all the the amazing words you have all wrote. i really really appreciate them um and um, i can't thank you enough i wish i can give everyone uh, the full training which we can give everyone the five thousand dollars i wish to give everyone a really uh, amazing gift and that's why i decided to have this coupon for all of you guys uh thank you for all the support and thank you for joining the kickstart your cybersecurity career training and uh, this presentation all the slides will be added to the facebook group will be sent through email so you will have access to them so don't worry about the about this and uh, make sure you check all the resources if you don't want to join the training there's all the resources and all the different uh, links and books you can you can dive into them um all the resources i try to answer all of you guys questions about the next steps and about the roadmap for your career in this presentation uh, so i appreciate all you you guys joining and i really made great connections with all of you guys there's so many names that I wish to myself that they win. Um, System Exploited, uh, Hussein, uh, Ganesh, and, and different people who I, who I saw their comments, I saw their messages, I really wish they win. Um, unfortunately, they didn't, but they win today with, with this 20% uh, coupon. And I can't thank you enough, all of you guys. Um, that's it for this uh, session. Uh, if there's any other question, um, some questions. Hi, Amar. Can we pay by bank account deposit? You can pay by bank uh, transfer if you can transfer to an IBAN number. Uh, just email me and I will send you an invoice with the bank details so you can uh, 
um, provide the payment. If there is a payment plan available, yes, it's a payment plan of five hundred of one hundred uh, uh, one hundred fifty seven dollars per month for six months. That's a payment plan, uh, or you can pay at one payment of seven hundred ninety seven. Um, is it gonna be a lifetime subscription? Um, yes, it will be a lifetime subscription. Once you join the training, you have access to the videos for lifetime and the support for one year. So you have a lifetime access to all the videos, the workbooks, the reports, everything you are, you will be in the member for lifetime, uh, with us. Uh, uh, thank you. You truly did a great job, sir. Thank you very much. Um, system exploited. Hussein is saying, no, it's totally fine. I already learned a lot from you and the Facebook group and Two thanks. You're always welcome. And make sure that you guys are joining the Facebook group. This is the group where I will keep uh, adding lots of stuff to it. So make sure that you are there. Thank you all guys. Um, I will just check if there's any last questions to answer. Um, if there's any questions, I can help you. Um, we win this a lot of knowledge from your sessions and that's enough for, to me. Thanks, Amal. You are absolutely welcome. I really, I really enjoyed the experience as you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm now answering if there's any question about the training, about the payments, about, um, thank you very much. So I will close the session here. Um, And I wish you have an amazing uh, Easter if you guys celebrate. If you don't, I wish you have an amazing weekend. And see you again. And see you in the Facebook group. We have now a Telegram uh, channel. Make sure you join uh, us everywhere. Um, Hazem Mahmoud is saying how to hack your site and take the course and how to protect it. <laughs> That's a good course to make. Eh? Um, uh, so, uh, Renmark is saying, I first watched your video on uh, reverse engineering on Minesweeper, which is uh, Flare VM, Flare, uh, Flare on uh, CTF, on Hacker Exploit. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that was a, a really long time ago. I'm happy that you enjoyed. Um, can we pay the 797 by six months? You can pay 157 per month for six months. This is the payment plan. So you have two options. 797, which is one payment, or you can pay $157 per month for six months. All what you need to do is to go to maltrack.com slash join the coupon giveaway. Make sure you take the, the step right now because it's only until, uh, until the end of, uh, until next Friday. So make sure that you take, take a chance this time. And after that, it will come back to its real price. And here's the thing. This training is being updated a lot and it will be updated even more in the next uh, few months. And once we do the next um, the next update, this training price will increase. So make sure that you catch this uh, this this discount. This is the the least number you will ever get because next time it will be one thousand two hundred, and after the the discount it will be the nine hundred ninety seven. So make sure that you take the chance now. It's $200 off, so make sure that you take this chance. And this is the lowest price you can ever get for that training. Make sure that you get it. Um, what about the, the meditation testing? What's the career roadmap? We have covered that at the beginning. We might also provide um, 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 a red team um, training, which covers more the attack simulations and the real attacks. We might provide a training like that. Just keep, uh, keep an eye on the email uh, for any news. Uh, I will be sending you guys different emails and I will post on the Facebook group. So make sure that you always read them and you are there. Uh, that's it for this session. Thank you guys. And